Yeah, I'm Jacob Alfin Sheriff, and I'm presenting faster bootstrapping with polynomial error. Uh, this is joint work with Chris Piker. So, uh, bootstrapping is a technique to make fully homomorphic encryption work, and since uh, I was put in this session instead of the fully homomorphic encryption session, I can, uh, I guess, go through what, exactly what fully homomorphic encryption is. So, what it does is it lets you take a, an encrypted message, which we're denoting here and through the rest of the talk, uh, by something in a box, because we don't have a better way to represent it. And it lets you um, do computations on that ciphertext to get um, an encryption of a function applied to the message without having to decrypt. And it's very useful. And as, like, as I said, it's, uh, it's had so much work in the area that they couldn't even fit me into the fully homomorphic encryption session. They had to put me in, lat in the lattice session, even though we mostly use lattices as a black box in this work. Um, so schemes that are naturally occurring are what we call somewhat homomorphic. Um, the reason for this is that the um, schemes, the ciphertexts have a level of uh, noise in them. And uh, the ciphertexts only decrypt properly if the noise is below a certain level. Um, since um, doing evaluations on the cipher, on a fresh, the freshly encrypted ciphertext, um, we'll then uh, raise the noise level, which we've denoted in yellow, to, and eventually if we keep on doing um, operations, we get to a ciphertext that if you do any more operations, you won't be able to decrypt properly. And so you can only evaluate uh, functions of a depth that's uh, a priori bounded. Um, in order to get around this, uh, we use a technique called bootstrapping to achieve uh, unbounded fully homomorphic encryption. So what is bootstrapping? So bootstrapping involves homomorph homomorphically evaluating the decryption function of the scheme. So in the clear, if you want to decrypt, you take the secret key and you apply it to the ciphertext um, to get back the, the message. So here, we actually have encryptions of the secret key. Then these encryptions are fresh. And then we um, homomorphically compute on these encryptions of the secret key the um, decryption function. So we end up with an encryption of the same message, but with less error, because we've only done uh, some amount of uh, homomorphic operations. And so we still have some left to do before we have to bootstrap again. So the uh, rate of error growth in bootstrapping is what determines the underlying cryptographic assumptions. Uh, in the best, uh, best known works uh, by Bukowski, Gentry, and Vikutanathan, Bukowski, and then by Gentry and Sahai and Waters from Last Crypto, um, for homomorphic addition, the error grows in an additive manner. But for homomorphic multiplication, the error grows by a factor which is polynomial in the underlying security parameter lambda, but independent of the errors in either of the ciphertext being multiplied. So since um, the known decrypt, best known decryption circuits have a depth logarithmic in the security parameter, this results in error growth of uh, lambda to the O log lambda and uh, similarly large appro lattice approximation factors, which is less than ideal. So the question is, can we do better? I guess I'm misleading you because, in fact, uh, Bukowski and Vikutin often actually showed you can do better. Uh, so the way they do this is they first they notice that the um, multiplication in uh, GSW, Gentry Sign Water Scheme from Last Crypto, is asymmetric. So the error on the left ciphertext grows by a factor polynomial in the uh, security parameter, but the error from the right ciphertext only grows by a factor corresponding to the message, uh, mu1. So as a result, if the messages are all binary, you can multiply all, a whole chain of ciphertexts in a right associative manner. So you do ct1 times ct, and then do that times ct minus 2, and so on. And we end up with the fact that the error will only grow by a polynomial level. It's essentially additive, quasi-additive. Each, each one grows by a polynomial factor, but they don't combine together. So how does this help us bootstrap? Uh, well, it doesn't by itself, but we use the magic of Barrington's theorem. Now, Barrington's theorem takes a depth D binary um, circuit and converts it into a length 4 to the D um, permutation branching program, which for these purposes can just be seen as, a length, uh, as uh, two long chains of uh, permutation matrices. Um, so when you actually um, get the input bits, those set the path that the take, you take through these permutation matrices. And then to actually evaluate the um, circuit or the branching program, you multiply the permutation matrices together. Um, so it turns out that um, the same uh, uh, low error growth thing that uh, works in, for single ciphertext also works for um, permutation matrices, so that if we multiply these permutation matrices together in a right associative manner, we also get polynomial error growth, 
which allows us to um, bootstrap in, with only polynomial growth. So why doesn't this solve everything? Well, there's a big problem. Uh, Barrington's transformation is very inefficient. Uh, so the best analysis of um, the decryption circuit is three log lambda, and it's inherently going to be logarithmic in the security parameter lambda because it depends on all the bits of the secret key. So the pro it requires um, lambda the sixth uh, permutation matrices to be multiplied, and it would inherently require at least lambda squared uh, homomorphic operations in order to uh, bootstrap using uh, Barrington's theorem. So how do we improve on that? Well, we obviously we do it faster, and we also have, uh, in a natural level, small polynomial error growth. Um, so the way we do this is by treating um, decryption as an arithmetic function over ZQ instead of as a binary circuit. Um, this, uh, by doing so, we avoid Barrington's theorem, but we do still use the permutation matrices, which is part of the reason why I discussed it in the last slide, so you get some idea of what's going on. So our main idea is that we embed the additive group ZQ under addition into a small symmetric group. So how does our work compare to previous uh, results? Um, so first, there's a line of work in just trying to get uh, homomorphic, fully homomorphic encryption as fast as possible so that hopefully at least us theoreticians can call it practical. Maybe the mere might, might disagree with, <laughs> and my, mere might say that the actual practical people will definitely disagree with us. But so in that sense, um, Gentry, Hele Gentry, Levy, and Smart in 2012 and the authors of this paper, um, Last Crypto, showed that you can uh, bootstrap with only a polylogarithmic number of homomorphic operations, but that did incur um, super polynomial noise growth of lambda to the O log lambda. So the work of Brokersky, if I could to nothing, which is what we're improving on, is, um, again, it, it uh, achieves only, it Succeeds in only having the noise grow by a polynomial factor in the security parameter, but it, is, uh, very, it takes a huge number of homomorphic operations. It, it appears lambda to the sixth, and certainly at least uh, lambda squared. So our work um, has, it requires only a quasi-linear number of homomorphic operations in the security parameter. Uh, so for schemes that um, only encrypt, uh, can only encrypt bits, this is uh, quasi-optimal, because it you requires at least uh, lambda operations in order to combine the bits together and to get to uh, result, and uh, our noise growth is only um, quasi-quadratic, which is, I think, a lot better. Uh, our second uh, result, which is a little bit orthogonal, is the variant on the GSW13 uh, encryption scheme, which um, is a much, has a much simpler description and error analysis, and it also has a useful technique of full re-randomization of error as a natural side effect. Um, Rikursky, Vaikutanatha did the same thing via a partial re-randomization, but they had to use extra key material, and it wasn't so natural. Um, our thing is much more natural and has applications to uh, a whole bunch of other papers, including one uh, later in this session and uh, several in ePrint. Okay, so I'm going to first go through this uh, simpler uh, variant of the GSW scheme, and then I'm going to get to my main, our main result. So our result centers on the uh, gadget matrix G from uh, work of Michiancho and Piker in 2012. Um, the key things here is that we define a G inverse of a matrix A, which has the properties that the inverse is short and that G times G inverse of A is A, which is why we're calling it G inverse, even though it's sort of an abusive notation because we're not really inverting the matrix. Okay, so the actual uh, decryption um, relation for the scheme is for a bit encrypted under a vector secret key S, um, you have a matrix over ZQC, which satisfies uh, that S times C is mu times S plus times the gadget matrix plus a little bit of noise. And so um, under this, um, viewing the scheme like this, the homomorphic, homomorphic multiplication of two ciphertexts is uh, C1 times the G inverse of um, the ciphertext on the right. And so um, just ignoring the notation, which nobody's going to read anyway, the key thing is that we get the error is mostly Error growth is mostly dependent on the uh, form of the G inverse of the right-hand cipher text. So in the previous, um, in the actual paper of uh, Gentry, Sahai, and Waters, the G inverse is done as a deterministic bit decomposition, and as a result, the error E1 will grow by a factor um, n, where n is the dimensions of the, well, n by n is the dimensions of the cipher texts. Uh, so our method, since we, um, 
are able to sample a random uh, sub-Gaussian pre-image that only grows by a square root of n factor, which is tighter, and then the error is fully randomized. Okay, I'm not, this, this is all the lattice stuff. It's going to be everything else is black box from lattices. So if you don't understand anything about lattices, just you can maybe pay attention now. <laughs> Um, so our overview of our bootstrapping algorithm is that decryption in uh, these schemes can be expressed as the inner product of a secret key with a binary ciphertext C, and then rounding that to the nearest multiple of Q over 2 modulo Q. So our scheme has uh, several steps. First, we have to prepare by encrypting each of the coordinates of the secret key S under a certain group embedding, which I'll describe in detail a little later. Um, so for our actual bootstrapping, we use uh, two homomorphic algorithms. We use a homomorphic addition, addition, because it's not actually done with addition, where the, um, again, recalling that these um, boxes signify um, that these are ciphertext encrypting the, uh, what's that, whatever's in the box we have, that the homomorphic sum of A and B is just the encryption of A plus B. And then we also have an equals operation, which takes a ciphertext encrypting an integer v, and then a plaintext integer z modulo q, and it outputs an encryption of 1 if v is equal to z and an encryption of 0 otherwise. So using these uh, two algorithms, our bootstrapping works by first computing the inner product, which um, since c is just a binary vector, results in just a sum of those um, coordinates of the secret key s corresponding to where the ciphertext c is equal to 1. And then uh, we compute the uh, rounding. Now, rounding, um, it just, uh, for each um, value z that um, modulo q that would round to 1, we simply compute equals of that, and then we homomorphically sum all of these together. Now, the reason this works is because there's at most, there's at most one of them that's going to be equal, and if it's, um, if uh, v in fact rounds to 1, then it'll, it'll have exactly 1, and if v does not, it'll, there won't be anything that's equal to 1, so this whole sum will be 0. All right, so now it just, it just remains to show how to actually implement these um, homomorphic sum and uh, homomorphic equality. Now, homo um, so how do we do this? Uh, we do it by embedding the um, ZQ under addition into the uh, symmetric group on Q elements. At least this is a warm up. I'm going to get through the actual real result in the next slide. But this um, does most of it, and then the other slide just builds on it. So what we do is we um, embed into the um, group of uh, rotation matrices um, in SQ. Um, so in fact, uh, using this representation, we can just, we only need to hold on to, in our actual homomorphic situation, we only need to hold on to uh, one column of encryption, where, of, where each of these uh, elements is just an encrypted um, ciphertext. So we have these Q elements, and then to recover a full matrix, we can just rotate the um, ciphertext and get the whole matrix. All right, so how do we do addition? So addition is not, normally in, in homomorphic encryption, addition is easy, you just add the two, cipher, you just add the two ciphertexts. Uh, here, we don't do that, we um, multiply. Now, this doesn't seem so nice, because uh, why, why would you multiply, but you'll see in a second why. So anyway, we actually, actually do multiplication by just um, only having one of the, one of the ciphertexts um, recovering one of the matrices from uh, the vector and then just multiplying that matrix by the vector to just get a vector back. This makes multiplication only Q squared instead of uh, whatever, Q cubed, Q to the 2.7, whatever, whatever the matrix multiplication is these days. Um, so uh, if you recall from before, um, doing this in a right associative manner will lead up to polynomial growth in the error. Um, so now here's the reason why we actually use this um, Nasty, why we do this nasty uh, form of addition is that it makes um, computing this equality thing really easy. We just take the bth entry from this uh, first column of the matrix or the vector that we're storing, and then we output that as the, as the uh, result of the equality tests of an encryption of A and a plain text B. Okay. So in this warm-up, uh, it requires, um, again, each multiplication requires uh, Q squared homomorphic operations, and since Q is quasi-linear in the security parameter, and it requires, uh, and there are lambda total elements in the secret key, it will require um, quasi-cubic number of homomorphic operations to bootstrap, which is already an improvement over the previous result. Uh, however, we can actually do significantly better. Um, we do so by choosing, instead of choosing Q um, 
arbitrarily we choose it to be a product of a large number of distinct uh, primes uh, pi. Um, by the prime number theorem, we can choose both have the primes be at most size logarithmic in the security parameter and have there be about a logarithmic number of different primes. Um, so in this case, we recall the Chinese remainder theorem, which says that uh, ZQ is isomorphic to the product of the ZPIs. Um, and here we now have the embedding of, we instead of embedding ZQ into the entire, into all of SQ, we embed each uh, mod PI part into the permutation group, or into the symmetric group on PI um, letters, and we embed in each integer X, X into a component of, each component of X into the proper um, permutation matrix from the previous slide. Um, so in this case, addition is essentially the same as in the uh, last slide, but we just do each part component-wise. Um, now, to do equality, we have to recover from the uh, Chinese remainder theorem representation to the full representation. So what we do is we first compute the equality test uh, mod PI, which we know how to do from the last slide, for each um, value of a ciphertext A of the ciphertext A modulo um, PI, and then we recombine by just multiplying together the results of the equality tests, and if they're equal modulo all the PIs, they're equal modulo Q. Um, so here, um, each um, addition operation, that is each uh, multiplication, is only a polylogarithmic number of homomorphic operations, and since there are a number of uh, secret key bits is going to be linear in the secret in uh, security parameter lambda. We have only a quasi-linear number of homomorphic operations to actually bootstrap. All right, so some open problems that we still have. So first, um, again, this is it's opt it's quasi-optimal for things that encrypt only a single single bit at a time, but it's much slower than the uh, fastest things like such as the paper we had last year. So an open question is, can we actually bootstrap with a sublinear number of homomorphic operations and still only have the error grow by a polynomial level? Um, there, are several, there are several barriers in the uh, form of the GSW scheme that, for instance, uh, we, can, we can only encrypt uh, single bits over the integers, and we can only encrypt um, roots of unity over the, um, over the in a ring situation without incurring uh, significant growth and error based on the fact that the message is uh, integral part of the growth of the error. Um, whereas in uh, other schemes, you can pack a whole bunch of uh, ring, like a whole ring element into, uh, into a ciphertext, which makes things go a lot quicker. Um, so the second open problem is that, as I mentioned in the first slide, that we actually have to have encryptions of the secret key. So this is, this, um, to have unbounded FHE, this results in encrypting the key under itself, which is a circular security situation. Um, so this paper and every previous bootstrapping paper has just made an ad hoc assumption that the scheme is circular, secu circular secure to do this. Um, however, our representation is a little bit different than the previous scheme, so the question is, maybe this helps us prove circular security, or maybe this could actually hurt, maybe this actually is more vulnerable to an attack. I hope for the former. Um, thank you very much. Are there any questions?